December is an important time for events in semiconductors. It's when everybody wants to get their last announcements out before the new year. Every year, it seems, I'm always trying to cover three or four different uh, events. And this year, we've got a combination of IEEE. Um, I'm doing a panel uh, later tomorrow, actually, about uh, 3D packaging and what's next beyond that. But also tomorrow is Lattice's developer conference, their second annual developer conference about everything that's going on with relation to Lattice in the FPGA space. I've just spent an hour speaking to the CSO, Isam Ilash Maui about the conference. But the important thing here is that FPGAs are still part of the compute family. Again, I speak about on this channel a lot about high performance, uh, high performance compute, uh, what's needed to get there. And in terms of the FPGA space, the needs and demands are a lot more varied than what you consider in traditional compute. FPGAs by design, field programmable gate arrays, means that you can bring your more optimized algorithm and optimize it further on an FPGA without needing to build an ASIC. Now, it's going to be higher performance than a CPU. That's the idea. It's not going to be as power efficient as, say, a GPU or dedicated ASIC, but at it's highly configurable, and that's where the benefit is. And we're seeing a renaissance in FPGAs recently. It's not just simply that reconfigurability that's needed. You also need I.O. You also need security. You also need more advanced interfaces, whether that's 1 gig, 2 gig, 25 gig, um, or you know even higher. FPGAs also have long life cycles. So the ability to support what could be potentially coming out in the future such as post-quantum cryptography, is becoming a more important feature of new FPGAs coming into the market. Thing is, new FPGAs don't come into the market that often. As I said, it's a very long life cycle uh, product um, of, in of itself. Most of what's deployed today in FPGA land was uh, designed 10, 15 years ago, and is still sustaining those uh, product designs that they're embedded into. However, because we have new generation process nodes, because we have advanced packaging, because we have new use cases, there is a need for FPGA companies to go and build what's needed at the customer level in the latest generation process nodes. Now, in this uh, instance, we're talking, uh, if you're talking about the big, big FPGAs, you might be in a, say, a five nanometer type class node. But for the smaller FPGAs, for the things providing security or base brand management control, or hardware security, or uh, sensor fusion in your ADAS system, you may be more looking like at a 16 nanometer node. And that's essentially what we're going to speak, be speaking about today. As part of Lattice's developer conferences, they're announcing Nexus 2, which is, is their second generation Nexus platform. And if you haven't seen any videos that I've done on Lattice before, uh, the short uh, story is essentially most FPGAs in history are built almost in isolation. They have their own way of doing things, their own software stacks. Uh, and once you build it in, you're kind of vendor locked in to what's happening there. The Lattice approach since about 2019 or so is that instead we, they're going to build platforms. And on that platform, you may have you know, a half dozen or a dozen product families that may be focused on power efficiency, on I.O., on uh, security, on SERDES, uh, on certain hardened silicon like AI engines. And the point about it is that within a platform, you can have a unified software stack that works across it, or it's very easily portable. There's none of this extremely highly custom configuration needed if you go and you know, iterate off a platform design that you've done using an FPGA. Nexus 2 is the second generation of those platforms, and it is really focused on the super tiny uh, FPGAs. I managed to get hold of one of their Certus N2 chips. Uh, we'll show a picture of that up here. And these are aimed at sort of like the sub 100,000 uh, cell level um, using LUT4s, but having the modern generation, you know, C, MIPI, um, and DeFi kind of bandwidth operations and hardware security and things like fast boot time, enabling the, ha having the ability to boot an FPGA in 50 to 100 milliseconds rather than half a second, for example, helps by bit, helps in that security chain, um, but also helps with you know, power consumption and the ability to duty cycle. Uh, and 
the point is, because FPGAs are embedded in such a long time in those products, customers are demanding the need for uh, new features uh, with the demands, things like uh, you know scope one, scope two, uh, power consumption in new designs, and how do we save every watt in an AI server, for example, so we can spend those watts actually doing compute rather than doing ancillary things. Uh, I'm not saying security is ancillary. I'm just saying how can we do it effectively at the lowest power with something that's going to last a long, 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 long time. And the whole point of uh, Nexus is, and Nexus 2 especially, this new generation, is that the demand for those smaller FPGAs is increasing. The demand for having features on those FPGAs is increasing. Just like we see with demand on new generation CPU, high performance, low power, new generation GPU, high performance, low power, and new generation AI ASIC at high performance, low power. Um, the only difference with FPGA is that the feature set is you know, becoming even more critical uh, and almost vertical dependent. Typically, when we speak about FPGAs, you know, we're speaking about you know, telco and defense, and as I said before, automotive, um, you know, perhaps in you know, medical. Companies like uh, Lattice at their conference this week, they're going to be seeing all of that and more. I mean, uh, they're going to have presentations from a, a company called SICK that's involved in centrifusion. But also uh, Teledyne FLIR, the company that makes um, you know, infrared imaging cameras, uh, they're going to be there as well, also talking about sensor fusion. Apparently, um, there is advanced compute that needs to happen, and you need the security, you need the I.O. that an FPGA provides, and then you also need the software stack to support it. Um, the conference, uh, for those of you who haven't heard of it before, this year they're expecting about 6,000 people. It's a three-day event. The first day is in person. That's where you get the you know the keynotes from the executives and the invited talks. And I, I believe there's a couple of panels this year. Uh, days two and three uh, is mostly focusing on the presentations. So that's where people who are into FPGAs can learn how to design, le learn tips and tricks on what to do. Um, there's also you know in person on day one going to be a demo room. Last year there were some like 40 demos. This year there's going to be 80 demos. And actually later in this video we're going to go see some of those demos in action. Um, and you know, I, I, I've been told by the executives here that there's going to be a more exciting range of demos shown off. The whole point of building an FPGA, and you know, this is this is this is from them themselves. Is you build it with ideas in mind. The customers think of a million different ways to use it, and we're going to see some of those uh, at, at the event. So uh, here here are some of the demos shown off at Lattice's developer conference this year to uh, show you some of our ecosystem partners, some of the demos that they have running our FPGAs, and some of the innovations that are bringing to the table here. Hello, um, so I'm uh, Venkat from tinyvision.ai, and uh, we are a design services company, and uh, we are also specializing in the Lattice Semiconductor Crosslink U NX FPGA. Uh, we built a little system on module, uh, that's a pretty small thing. It has the flash, memory, clocking, everything built in. And a uh, pretty small form factor right here. Oh, it's tiny. Yes, it's pretty tiny. So it's a tiny vision yeah. board, right? And um, we have our dev kits up here. So we do. It's me. And uh, a whole bunch of supporting boards that go with it into the ecosystem. What we have as a demo is uh, we're demonstrating... Uh, full HD image processing at 30 frames a second using our partner company Streamlogic, their tool chain. And their tool chain is a graphical tool chain. It lets you drag and drop uh, various image processing elements and press a button and get RTL out of it. And what we have here is a pretty simple looking application that does, um, it does color detection, right? Now, the really cool thing about this is that all this was done by pressing a button to generate the RTL. We did not have to sit and do test benches in RTL or prove out various image processing elements. We also have a second demo here from our uh, partner company, Constructive Realities, and uh, they've ported time of flight processing onto the Crosslink U FPGA. So, over to them. So, I'm Eric Slicer from Constructive Realities. Uh, so, what we've implemented on the, the Tiny Vision 
plunks, uh, the Lattice NX33. Uh, we've implemented a fixed point depth pipeline that's actually running on the FPGA. It's ideal for compute constrained environments where we can run a full high resolution VGA time of flight pipeline on a very small device. Uh, whereas normally it would take up you know, a lot more compute power on, uh, you know, on the host, which in most of our applications are small board computers like Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we had looked previously at implementing uh, our depth pipeline on FPGAs. And, and at the time, you know, there was this chasm, everything was too small or too large, yeah. right? And so the, and, and our kind of preferred use case was to be, be USB connected. And so the, 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 the Lattice NX part with the hard five for USB kind of solved a very, very, you know, kind of real challenge and actually had the density and performance to be able to implement our pipeline. on. So it's really the first product that's come around that kind of strikes in the middle uh, where we could, we can, uh, you know, we could, we could do what we need to. We've got a little bit extra headroom to be able to do other things that are part of our vision pipeline. Uh, so yeah, so that was, yeah. it, there's one option. Yeah, I think, I think I'll add a little bit to that. Uh, this is kind of a Goldilocks part in some sense, uh, because uh, when you want to process a couple of cameras worth of uh, images, you don't want a giant FPGA. Uh, you don't want something too small either. You want something that is just right. It's capable, low power, and small, right? Those are the important things. And I think this chip was, is just perfect for that. Um, it's not got too many IOs, so it's a it's small. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Rob DeMillier. I'm here with Nerala. We're a Boston-based AI software company that specializes in putting uh, neural networks, running neural networks on low power devices, uh, such as the Lattice FPGAs. Uh, what we have here is a demo uh, that shows a relatively simple application where we're detecting presence and absence um, of of coffee and, and, and tea bags in a, uh, an image frame. Uh, but the network is running on the Lattice Certus Pro NX uh, with some of the network architecture running here on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, again, a relatively simple application, but it was trained in five minutes on the Raspberry Pi computer. Um, and we're, we're seeing inference speeds here in the, on the order of five frames per second. So uh, yeah. This is just, just a prototype at this point. We're looking to productize it over the next year in further collaboration with Lattice. And uh, you know, hopefully there's more to come here in, in 2025 on this. So I'm a staff engineer at Virtual Incision. And so this is Mira, uh, the world's first miniature surgical robot. So essentially everything below my hand goes inside a patient. We're FDA cleared for colon resection. So once the robot's in, uh, we'll, uh, we've got uh, um, uh, motors in uh, these joints with um, drive electronics, uh, and the robot will actually go ahead and uh, do the colon resection. With our, with our camera, so we have a, a full HD uh, endoscopic camera that's fully articulated, and we're really looking at you know, new technologies that we can bring to imaging um, you know, in the surgical, surgical environment. And so one thing that we've been doing uh, this year is partnering with NVIDIA and Lattice on Holoscan Sensor Bridge. So Holoscan Sensor Bridge is an exciting new technology where you basically take uh, raw sensor data uh, through an FPGA, put it into UDP packets, go to you know, RDMA, Rocky, Ethernet, uh, and they will arrive directly in a GPU where you can process them uh, and, and really do anything with it. So, you know, base level uh, processing would be uh, if you've got image data, demosaicing, you know, color correction, uh, black level compensation, sharpening, you know, all, the, all those sorts of algorithms, you can actually run those in the GPU in real time with ultra low latency. So uh, you're not hitting frame buffers, you're not hitting sort of those, those walls in uh, computation that you typically would run into. And so what we did was we started with um, the standard lattice uh, uh, NVIDIA Holoscan Sensor Bridge EVK, and then we miniaturized it to a single chip solution. So this is just a little engineering dev board that we have. So we have a Certus Pro NX. So this thing uh, has a soft uh, D5. Uh, so we've got uh, two MIPI cameras. These are Raspberry Pi camera connectors that we use internally uh, on our team just because it's, it's easy to, to make camera modules with that form factor. And we just have a 
and cheap, Ex exactly. And so, and then we have a SFP right here. So you, uh, you can plug in uh, copper or, uh, optical SFP. So then the question is, okay, how do I take that and get it into our actual product? So our current product uses sort of like a traditional serializer, deserializer solution uh, that was on a form factor of about this big. So this board would take the image sensor uh, data and then serialize it into a coax connection. Um, and so what we did was uh, because Lattice has uh, probably the smallest FPGA on the market with a 10 gig cer uh, Certus as well as MIPI support. So we were able to get that down to a two by three centimeter package. So what we have here is we've got our Certus uh, FPGA uh, right here. And then we also have a Marvell 10 gig copper Phi. So this board, uh, you can think of it as taking MIPI in and ethernet out. You know, I've been following Lattice for a number of years now. It was initially accelerated by their new CEO a few years ago who came from AMD, who I got on really well with. Uh, he took a bunch of his team uh, over to Lattice and that got me more interested in the company than ever because really in this industry, it's almost who you know, not what you know. Uh, but it's very obvious from you know their strategy that you can't just go after high-end FPGAs, uh, small, uh, you know, the sort of sub 100 or even the 100 to 500,000 cell FPGAs are still in high demand. They still need innovation and they still need events like this to showcase A, what they can do and B, share uh, the tips, the tricks, uh, the potential of what these chips can do. Um, FPGAs, by their nature, don't get a lot of time in, in, in the limelight because we often find them in embedded systems. Um, they're very much not at the forefront of the customer lifestyle, like a smartphone chip or a PC chip or a GPU uh, might be. Then again, you could almost say the same thing about AI chips these days, but because you know there are companies worth tri trillions of dollars dealing with it, we get to hear about it a lot more. Whereas FPGAs, we don't hear about it that much. And uh, as I was talking to the, you know, the executive team here, there is no global FPGA conference to bring everybody together um, as there would be any sort of like uh, any traditional trade show or an IEEE event. Um, so that's what makes, you know, Lattice's developer conference um, really interesting. And yeah, these days I say it's not a Lattice specific event. They would love other FPGA players to come by and, you know, over time as it evolves, that it would be ideal to be a you know sort of general worldwide FPGA conference. Though, given that this is the second year, you know they're still seeing where that ramp is going, and with the renewed uh, interest in high performance compute, uh, the need for FPGAs is growing either in the data flow data flow path itself or actually doing the compute um, with you know with all the features that I keep on mentioning. It has been really exciting. It's good to see the executives here. It's good to you know finally meet the new CEO, Ford Tamer, to see where he takes the company. Um, but if you are interested in the FPGA you know, life cycle and what's new and how to use the, the FPGA software that's out there, you can still sign up for Lattice's conference to go see all the presentations. I believe they'll be putting some of them on YouTube eventually, um, potentially. Uh, but yeah, no, simple sign up, go to the website. There will be a link in the description. And if you happen to be in the Bay Area in Santa Clara next year, it's usually around second week of December, um, then I will see you there because I'll be here as well.